This is Would Evie Drive It, a tiny little show on our channel where we let Evie judge the cars. Would I drive a Ford Bronco Sport? Hell if I know, but first, information explosion. She's talking about the Ford Bronco that we have on order. It's gonna be coming um, hopefully maybe in July, but everybody said, well, a lot of people said in the comments, you guys should get the Bronco Sport, the little cute one. That'd be perfect for Evie. Such a logical suggestion. So logical. So this is gonna be a fun one. Let's start with emotion factor. Sweetie, are you emotionally moved by the style of the Ford Bronco Sport? I do love a contrasting roof and a boxy exterior. It does look a lot like a big Bronco shrunk down and uh, encapsulated in the same platform that you'd put a Ford Escape on because that is exactly what it is. Yeah, it's super beefy, but also cute somehow. I like it. What about driving the Bronco Sport? Any thoughts? I don't know if it's because we've been in some zippy cars lately, but it, this feels kind of lumbering. What do you find lumbering? Is it the steering or the acceleration? Both, actually. I don't find the steering to be as smooth as I expect. And when I press the throttle, I feel like I'm not getting enough speed. And then, oh my gosh, there's too much speed. Number one, the steering, there is a rubbery quality. When you turn to the left here, it builds tension it just kind of keeps ramping up, so it keeps wanting to pull you back. And really good steering, usually there's some pull, but it also has a, um, a settled quality where once you're at a particular amount of steering input, it kind of wants to stay there. That's a great way to describe what I'm experiencing that I couldn't articulate. And then on the powertrain front, um, do you know what's special about the engine? Is it a turbocharged engine? It is, but the other special thing is that it only has three cylinders. It's a oh, 1.5 wow. liter three cylinder. <laughs> it's a small displacement engine. And so in order for it to make power, that turbocharger has to spool up and do its spooly thing. <laughs> if you're asking for more power, then maybe there's a little bit of delay there that you're experiencing. And then I also have to do something with like the, um, the transmission tuning. Maybe um, it's not giving you a downshift when, right when you want it. Um, mm. Sometimes uh, manufacturers will want to keep it in a, a higher gear so that when you lean into it uh, with the accelerator that it doesn't feel nervous. Sometimes if it's too eager to downshift, it can feel like jumpy and, and like weak. Oh, it's got oh. a downshift to give me this power. One thing I would like to point out though is that it is really, really smooth riding and quiet in here. For, yeah. a, for a small SUV, I think one of the great things, the great achievements of the Bronco Sport is that it's got this sort of refined quality that um, really uh, emerged to me when I was on the launch back last year uh, doing just long stints on the highway. It rides mm -hmm. great. It's shocking. I'm shocked. <laughs> wow. Full throttle acceleration. Whee. In terms of ultimate power, there's actually enough zip there from the three cylinder. I just had a thought too that um, we're on these windy mountain roads. So I only want power for very brief periods of time. Mm. Like I want to get up to speed because I've had to pull off the road to let someone quicker go by. So it seems like some of the issues you might be having are specific to our location and specific to you, mm -hmm. but you would get used to it. Yeah, I'd be really curious to drive this on the freeway and experience it the way you experienced it. One thing we haven't talked about, what do you think about the style of the interior? The seats. I never thought I would like blue leather seats with contrasting heather gray material. I love it. It's so cute. It looks really sharp and modern. Pre-collision assist. Letting you Give know there was a motorcycle. Right there. I know, I know, I know. It, it doesn't necessarily know that that object is making a left. Mm-hmm. As you make your way around to the left here, I'd like to point out that it's a very tight turning circle. Yeah. That may come in handy later when we're off-roading. Oh. Mm. Last thing, what about visibility? Because there are some peculiarities of the vehicle. This is a more intrusive than I'd like, and there's a really wide pillar in the back as well. Yeah. Does that have blind spot warning? It does have blind spot warning. And then the other thing I was curious about is the hood. Because the way they've set yes. this up is to be very blocky. So when you're in the vehicle and you look forward, there's this hood that just goes 
boop, right out there. And like there's even raised parts that intrude further into your vision. Undulations that, of style. <laughs> that did take a bit of getting used to. Manageable though? Totally manageable, but I haven't driven this anywhere where I have to change lanes. Ah, the joys of mountain living. <laughs> All right, we have some emotion, but is it? Family friendly? The Bronco Sport falls into sort of a hard to categorize space. Um, I did a video for Kelly Blue Book talking about the Bronco Sport, and even though it shares the same platform as the Ford Escape, it's shorter in length, and people are like, it's a subcompact. I'm like, well, not really. It's essentially the same interior volume as a Honda CRV. Oh, wow. By price, it also aligns with the compact SUVs if you equip them with all wheel drive. All wheel drive is standard with the Bronco Sport. So I'm going to think of it as a compact SUV, but there are a lot of ways to parse it. Uh, regardless, uh, second row space, what do you think? I was really impressed by that, especially the height. If, if you have tall, lanky boys. A Lincoln hat. The clears. <laughs> Ford calls it a safari roof. It kind of feels like a little bit of a, a Land Rover sort of thing, but the roof steps up over the rear passengers. So consequently, you have all this headroom. And I would say even like legroom space is great. There's plenty of foot space under there. I would happily ride in the back seat of a Bronco Sport. What about uh, getting kiddo in and out? She had no problems climbing back there. One rear seat complaint though, the rear seats don't, don't recline. Oh, you hate that. Oh, and I love a lazy recline. <laughs> One area I really like, and maybe you agree, uh, the cargo area. I love that it's ready to get sloppy. <laughs> What do you got planned? <laughs> Sweet, know. Sweetie's got a, a whole a cooler <laughs> filled with fish. She cannot wait to gut in the back of her Bronco Sport. I'm just saying, when you go have adventures, you get messy. Mm -hmm. It's pretty roomy, 32.5 cubic feet of space, which is a lot for a however you describe this small SUV. The other thing that I haven't seen in a really long time, flip up glass. That is super handy for when I'm gutting fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to have to reach in there and let them all flop on out, so <laughs> flop, flop, flop. On a safety note, we got a sampling earlier, but all Bronco Sports include Ford's Copilot 360, which includes like lane war departure warning, automatic emergency braking, all those active safety features. The NHTSA has not rated the Bronco Sports just yet, Ooh. but it does have seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag. So what do we think? Family friendly? Yay! Oh, family friendly. But is it? Mountain friendly? To properly assess the Bronco Sports mountain friendliness, we've actually left pavement. OMG! <laughs> so every Bronco Sport comes with, well, they'll, they'll call it four-wheel drive. It's basically an all-wheel drive system. They have right about eight inches of ground clearance. The Badlands trim, which is the really, really off-road one, has a little bit of extra ground clearance, and it has a really cool rear differential that can send power to either the left or the right wheel. And that's the one I drove in my Kelly Blue Book video. Click over here if you want to see my KBB video. This is the Outer Banks trim, and it's a little bit more basic, but I'm guessing this is all the off-road you need for now until we get deep into that Bronco life. Sweetie, how are you feeling? I'm glad this has the extra ground. Does this have the extra ground clearance? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy on a bike. Just keep going, you're fine. Hi. This is a good time to talk about the different goat modes. Goes over any terrain, goat. Um, I was wondering about that. Mm, that would be confusing if you didn't know that. Okay, you're currently in normal. Sport mode, by the way, I'll add, might be a good answer for you and your um, throttle response coming out of corners. Leave oh. it in sport mode, it'll go down a gear. You'll burn a little extra fuel, but baby, you'll feel the G's. <laughs> I do like to feel the G's. She does. We got eco mode, we got normal sport. Um, we've got slippery, which is like for wet or icy oh, conditions. Look, a tiny puddle. Tiny puddle, yay. <laughs> Good thing I got it in slippery mode, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna put you over here into sand. It might allow a little bit more wheel slip so you can keep moving on sand. Mm. Um, it changes the way the accelerator works, so it might give you more um, power more quickly. Um, it might change the steering so it's a little bit lighter so you can more easily manage it off-road. The goat modes change a lot of different parameters to make it more appropriate for the uh, terrain over which you're going over, which could be anything. What do you have me in now? I've got you in sand. Because this does seem to feel a little less rubbery than it did when I was driving on pavement. Oh, okay. Maybe a little bit more assist? Yes. Oh. I like it. Okay. 
can I quickly compliment you? You're driving at a slightly more reasonable speed <laughs> off-road and it's making me feel great. Look at the speed you drove over that pine cone. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're you're feeling it. You didn't see me earlier when I braked for a pie cone. <laughs> it was a whole thing. Are we cool? Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, it looks like a regular SUV, but it's sneaky because it's actually performing very well off-road here. <laughs> well, isn't that what SUVs are made to do? <laughs> By the way, this is why I wanted to come off-road because I knew at some point we'd have a big reaction. I feel like we've driven plenty of stuff that I've been like, can I go shoot it at the off-road part? And you say, nope. That's true. Most of the SUVs we drive, like, eh, you could do some off-road stuff. You but could, but probably I shouldn't. Here, go up this uh, side a little bit. What? Just a little bit. Yeah, and then give it some gas. <laughs> gas it. There we go. Gas, gas, gas. Whee! <laughs> that Leaning wasn't... into it. <laughs> that was not right. It was fun. And this is uh, kind of a Sherlock Holmes thing, but I'm going to point out the absence of something. What do you hear that? a lot of rattles? Oh, that's a really good point. The only clanking uh, or uh, vibrations you're hearing is would my heart. Your heart and maybe some camera gear. You can't hear a lot of noise when we're driving around, so it makes it feel like it's better able to handle the road. Yeah, it sounds confident. What should I do here? Just keep going. Well, there's someone behind me. Oh, you could like pull to the right, like right here. <laughs> they sure are. are. Oh man, I even have to pull over off road. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that. <laughs> Go left. What? This will be your challenge here. I'm gonna hop out for a second, just take a quick look. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Daddy says. He's telling me how to get over this because it's a little bit tricky for me. Stop. What's my speed? Slow. I'll be here. Little. Keep going. Keep going. So one suggestion when you're accelerating, don't like surge, surge, like maybe um, just more even with the, uh, the power, just kind of keep it steady. Okay. That went pretty well. <laughs> How you feeling, sweetie? I'm so glad I didn't accidentally hit you with this car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get out of the way. I'll leap when appropriate. I'll take a peek up here and see how it looks. He's checking it out so he knows what it's like over there so he knows if it's a good idea for us to do this. You're doing it, Trudy, you're doing it. <laughs> we were supposed to do this in the Big Bronco. <laughs> well, if you can do it in this one, then you'll be great in Big Bronco. That was scary. Thanks for your help. We only got one last little section. I'm gonna talk you down. Okay. You're clear. Slow. Come on. I hope we don't hit him. We won't hit him. He'll get out of the way. Cool. Mommy's just scared, but it's not dangerous. See how happy Daddy is? <laughs> High five, sweetie. You did some off-roading. That was scary. Thank you. It went well, though. Good job, sweetie pie. Can we do a little bit more? That's a great idea. <laughs> so just to reiterate the point, mountain friendly? Mountain friendly. I love the mountain. And now it's time for my favorite segment. Sweetie Potpourri. Digging into the Sweetie Potpourri, let's talk about that eight inch infotainment system. What do you think, my lady? Okay, we've been in some fancy vehicles, so my first thought was, it's so small. But then I thought, well, it's a touch screen, it's well laid out, it's easy to navigate, 
it's fine. <laughs> and there's this little lip that you can uh, anchor a thumb on so you can make super accurate inputs while you're driving. One of the things I hate is that when you get into an infotainment system and you need to, let's say, turn the treble down because the previous car reviewer no longer can hear treble, <laughs> <laughs> then you have to dig through all this menu structure. And what's great is that there's a single button right down here on the lower left that pulls up the audio controls. That's something I want a hard button for. And the other thing that's really cool right here on the right if you don't want to see the screen or think about it, there's a button dedicated for that purpose. If you hold it, Ooh. it goes blank. And if you push it, it just shows you the time. So you can kind of rule out all that infotainment stuff if you just want to focus on the road ahead. So cool. I only bring this up because I want to say the phrase elegant clicks one more time. Oh. But have you noticed with the vents? Yeah. It's a little gentle click there. That's, That's nice. nice. Yeah. Elegant clicks. What do you think about the seats? Are you comfortable? This is one of the rare seats that I was able to adjust in enough ways, raise it up, raise it forward, adjust this to the right place that I'm actually comfortable. You're dialed in with your seating position? I am, and there's excellent mid-back support, which I'm a fan of. On the seat backs here, uh, in this particular trim, we've got a little zippered area where you can store stuff, and then uh, you'll correct me on my pronunciation, but I think it's moly. It's basically an interwoven strap system, and you can use uh, that strap weave to attach accessories to it. Oh. I don't know what accessories you want, but that's the point. What would you attach to the backseat of your Bronco <laughs> Sport? Tell us in the comments. I really like the zippered pockets because I feel like I always have important papers that I want to stash somewhere and they wind up in the glove box and I forget about them. Do you want to find every secret documents? Look in the <laughs> zippered space. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that the Bronco Sport has only been on sale for less than half a year, and it already has three recalls. Is that a lot? It sounds like a lot. That's not um, a great sign, but you know, <laughs> this is why we have warranties and we have uh, angry tweets. Eee. Something to keep in mind. Uh, Ford, I hope you get it all together, especially since we're going to be buying a Ford I really know. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, what else should you consider? Uh, do you know what some of the competitors are? The Honda CRV, mm -hmm. the Hyundai Tucson, yep. the Jeep Compass. It's hard because like you might put it against Cherokee or you might put it against Compass, which is a little bit smaller. Again, this is a hard to classify vehicle, but if you look at the price and you look at the size, I don't know, you can find a lot of alternatives. This guy's gonna hit a cone with the back of his tire. Should I just chill? <laughs> chill, baby, just chill. That's why cones are made to bend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we pretty well covered it. The only question that remains, would Eddie drive it? Sweetie, what do you think? Bronco Sport, yes, no, maybe so? I really like the styling. It's really user-friendly in here on the interior. I like using the infotainment system. It was really fun off-roading in it. I'm a little hesitant about the way it drives, but after talking to you about it, I think I understand what was going on, so yeah. You feel that big <laughs> pothole we just went through? <laughs> Handled that thing with ease. It was a monster pothole, I it, wish you'd seen it. It was so big, they painted a red circle around it to identify it for motorists. We went right over it, and you didn't even really- I was talking to camera. <laughs> you didn't even acknowledge it. All I'm saying is that, yeah, the more time you spend with this thing, I bet some of those issues you have would probably smooth out. Even just driving it around here, like understanding what's going on is helpful. So it's a yes? It's a yes. Yay! If you're curious what I'm driving or flying between YouTube videos, give me a follow over on Instagram. And if you'd like to see what our family is doing, including Rory Dazzle, the cat, <laughs> give Evie a follow. I think that was a very successful drive. The only thing that remains is the awkward goodbye. Bye. Oh, you already left. <laughs> <laughs>